Three Evils of Capitalism, a slideshow by Eric Schechter. When people blame the problems of the world on unregulated capitalism, or corporate capitalism, they imply that capitalism itself is a good and healthy thing, and that we have merely strayed from its sound principles into some superficial corruption, which can be cleaned up through mere reforms. But the reformists are mistaken. They haven't seen what the principles of capitalism really are. The evils of inequality, externalities, and alienation are inherent in any market economy. Writing regulations more carefully won't save us, for greed can always find loopholes. Any separation between government and business is illusory. They share a revolving door, and often a bed. The only way to avoid rule by the wealthy class is to not have a wealthy class. And the parts of our socio-economic system are connected, so moving a few parts requires moving all. The first step is to spread awareness and understanding through leaflets, petitions, demonstrations. When enough people see what is really going on, together we'll make a new world. First evil, inequality. Inequality arises from the principles of the system, not just from some corruption. That's reflected in the board game Monopoly, which always ends with all the players but one totally impoverished, even if no one cheats. The data in Thomas Piketty's 2013 book shows that increasing economic inequality is a normal trend in capitalism, not an aberration. The problem is deeper than debt-based currency or any other particular method of exploitation. It's inherent in all market economies, even barter. Market transactions favor whichever participant is in the stronger bargaining position, and so they increase inequality and create plutocracy. Guylands and Page's 2014 study shows quantitatively that the USA is a plutocracy, not a democracy. Just a few people now own our homes, workplaces, debts, government, mass communications media, everything. Privately owned workplaces are little tyrannies. That's why we hate Mondays. Progress raises productivity, but its benefits are pocketed by the owners. For the rest of us, progress means layoffs, not leisure. Psychopaths seek positions of power over others, and normal people are turned psychopathic by power if they acquire it, as shown by the Stanford Prison Experiment. We find cruelty in prison guards, police, soldiers, workplace managers, business tycoons, and dictators. We even find it in democratically elected politicians if we can see past their lies and secrets. We should reorganize our societies so that there are no concentrations of power. That requires replacing markets with sharing and replacing authoritarian hierarchical government with peer-to-peer -peer networking. That's why I'm an anarcho-commie, which means share and don't hit the first two things we all learned in kindergarten. Second evil, externalities. Besides affecting the buyer and seller, any market transaction also affects others. Such effects are called externalized costs, or externalities. During the crash of 2008, Wall Street traders often reassured one another with IBG, YBG, meaning I'll be gone, you'll be gone. Externalities are more due to indifference than outright malice, but their effects are mostly destructive, like the proverbial bull in a china shop. Market prices are far from true costs, because they ignore externalities. Thus the market is not at all the efficient allocator of resources claimed by its worshippers. Conventional textbooks gloss over this topic as though it were minor, but in fact it's enormous. 
war, poverty, and ecocide are inevitable consequences of any market economy. And by the way, ecocide is much worse than most people realize. Feedback loops are about to send us over a climate cliff. We need big changes quick, or our species may go extinct. You might think the few people in power would get together and conspire to save the planet that they have seized for their own. But that's not how they're behaving. For instance, a few years ago, the Arctic began melting rapidly. That's one of the climate feedback loops, and it should have been a wake-up call to stop using fossil fuels before they kill us all. But instead, the plutocrats said, Oh, goody, now it will be so much easier to extract fossil fuels from the Arctic. That's because the market compels its biggest players to compete against each other in offering quick profits to investors, without regard to consequences. Any big players who find scruples will lose the race and be replaced. We need to overthrow not just the big players, but the whole game. Third evil, alienation. The problem is not just in our rulers. It's in all of us, in our culture, in the so-called American dream. You keep your stuff in your house, I keep my stuff in my house, I don't need to care about you, and in fact I can't afford to care about you. Owning things separately trains us to see our lives as separate, which in turn legitimizes our separate ownerships, completing the vicious cycle. We blame the less fortunate for their bad luck, because that's easier than facing up to the fact that we may be next, the system is unjust, and we don't know how to fix it. We may try to be kind, because that's human nature, but that's swimming upstream against the great current of the economy. We're a lonely crowd, competing against each other for survival. Friendships are commodities and strategic alliances. Our apathy and alienation seem inevitable and normal. We're all harmfully stressed by our lack of the things money can't buy. Trust, meaning, direction. Even if the reformists were right, that it is possible to make selfishness viable, why would anyone want to? No wonder random public shootings have become commonplace. We'll only become safe in a culture where everyone cares about everyone else and no one gets left behind. But that kind of caring requires sharing. To shelter the homeless and end the prevalence of shit jobs, we must restructure the entire economy and change how we feel about one another. Our present culture encourages our worst behavior. Let's replace it with one that brings out our better side. We've been told that it's human nature to be greedy and lazy, to work only for private gain, to work well only in competition. But none of that is true. We fell from grace 10,000 years ago with the invention of the word mine, but for 200,000 years before that we lived as equals, sharing everything of importance, and that's still our deeper nature, our genetic heritage. You can see anonymous cooperation at every traffic merge. A miracle is any event that most people believe impossible until it happens. The miracle we need is that good ideas will spread, and people everywhere will begin sharing and cooperating. Can we shed our cynicism, see with new eyes, and give each other the inspiration we need? This essay can be found at leftymathprof.org. The underlined blue phrases are links to related materials.